Welcome back. Today we are looking at induction cooking. How does it work? What is the history? And all of the science behind it. Let's go. Throughout most of history, cooking has remained largely unchanged because you have a heat source, you put something over top of that heat source, and it takes on that heat through thermal conductivity. That has been that way for thousands of years, all the way back from cooking a squirrel over a campfire to today where you light up a gas stove or you turn on a switch and create heat with an electric coil, and then that heat gets transferred to whatever you're cooking on top of. There have been two major scientific advances in the science of cooking itself in the past 100, 200 years. One of which is the microwave, which I'm sure we'll get to eventually. And the second is induction cooking. Now induction cooking is what we're going to focus on today and how it works and it is so cool. This is not a new technology. The first patent for induction cooktops was made in 1910. So this is like 120 year old technology, but it's still because people don't really understand it. It is not as mainstream as say electric cooktops or gas stove tops. What is induction cooking? Well, induction cooking uses the electromagnetic force. Now, remember that electricity and magnetism are two sides of the same thing. You can use electricity to create magnetism, and if you have a magnetic field, you can use that to create electricity, the flow of electrons in a current. Induction cooking is the wireless transfer of power from one power source to another wirelessly, so they're not touching, into heat. So let's head up into my kitchen and I'll show you my induction cooktop and we'll go over what's inside it. Welcome to the kitchen. This is the stove that I use. This is an induction cooktop. Now this is really cool. I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna turn on this burner here. Now, if I turn this on, there we go, medium heat. In a normal electric stovetop, this would be getting very, very hot. Or if it was a gas, there would be an actual flame and I'd be being burned right now. However, I can keep my hand here because this will never get hot. This stove actually never will receive any heat produced by itself. So now if I was wearing a ring or something that was magnetic, I would be burning my finger off right now. But right now, all that is being produced by this stovetop is a magnetic field. Now, this burner has many, 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 many different rings of copper in a giant coil spiraling inwards. When you pass an electric current through this coil of wire, it produces a magnetic field because of the electromagnetic force. Now, that by itself would not work. However, this is using an alternating current. Remember, remember AC power. Now in normal AC power running through your house, the electricity is passing back and forth about 40 to 50 times per second. This stovetop bumps that up to between 500 and 1000 times switching back and forth every second. So right now the electricity is traveling this way and then this way a thousand times a second, very, very quickly. What that means is this magnetic field, which I can't see, which is existing right here, is flipping poles, north, south, north, south, north, back and forth really, 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 really quickly. This is only producing a magnetic field at the moment, which means that I can touch it, I can lean on it, and it's never going to get hot. But what happens when I bring something into that magnetic field that is magnetic. This is a magnetic pot. You can check it by having a magnet. It sticks. So that means that there is some sort of iron inside of this pot. When I bring a magnetic pot into a magnetic field, something very cool happens. Now if it's, so I'm not going to turn this on right now because this pot is going to get incredibly hot very, very quickly. So I don't have this on right now. Let's pretend right now this is on. So there's a magnetic field existing over top of this burner. I put the pot on top inside of that magnetic field. Because the magnetic field is switching back and forth, back and forth so very quickly, the magnetic poles, this magnetized pot is getting eddy currents of electricity inside of it. So every time that magnet switches back and forth in the 
alternating current. It's creating a minuscule flow of electrons within the metal of this pot. And those electrons are moving back and forth very, very quickly. That creates resistance inside of this pot, which creates heat. So the pot itself is the only thing that gets warmed up on this stovetop. And when the pot gets warmed up, sometimes the surface of the cooktop will also get a little bit warm, but that's only because the pot is heating up, not the cooktop itself. Let's test this out. Okay, so I have a little bit of water inside of this pot right now. So I can turn this on, and it's going to boil very quickly. In fact, induction cooktops are around 70% more efficient than electric stovetops or gas because there's no, very little heat loss. Think about it. In an electric cooktop, you're heating up a plate or a coil of wires, and then that heat rises. When you put something over top of that, that warms up the pot, which then warms up the water, which boils the water. There's a lot of heat lost in that because you're not only warming up the stove, you're warming up the coil, you're warming up the pot, the heat is rising and some of that heat hits the water which warms it up and boils it. In this case, the pot itself is the element. It's heating up the pot which is in direct contact with the water. So it's much more efficient, it's faster, it's really cool. I can already feel almost instantly that there is heat radiating away from this. And that's because the flow of electrons inside this pot is bouncing back and forth, creating resistance and creating eddy currents that is warming up the pot and thus the water. I said before that this is wireless transfer of heat. And I'm going to show you that right now, actually. So I have some newspaper. On a normal cooktop, you should never ever do this. But I can take some newspaper and put this underneath the pot, just like so. Okay, so I switched the pot over here. I just had water boiling on this hot plate. Over here is still cool. Over here is still cool. Right here is still a bit warm, but I can still touch it because the only heat that was created was the pot was warming up and then sitting on this cool stovetop. Isn't that neat? That's so fascinating. For the same reason, this is a wireless transfer of heat. So I can have, say, newspaper in between the pot and the cooktop, and it still works exactly the same way. Now, because I have water in here, I know the temperature is not gonna get more than 100 degrees Celsius, so I'm not in any danger of burning the paper up. So don't do this if you're gonna massively heat this up. I wouldn't do this if I didn't have water inside of this pot. But right now, this water is simmering already simply because the magnetic field is penetrating through the newspaper, creating those eddy currents inside the pot and creating heat due to resistance. That is so cool. My wife does not want me to take apart my stove to show you what's on the inside for the sake of science. And I can't really blame her. Let's head back to the studio and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Okay, so now we get to look at what's inside of an induction cooktop. So behind me here, you can see a large coil of wire. This is what's inside of that stove that I just used. I want to bring this back to a couple of the other episodes that I've made. So I just recently made an episode on Tesla coils. And remember that a transformer is just a reduction or a difference of coils of wire, and that can change the voltage. In the situation of a Tesla coil, you're moving from maybe one or two coils to many, many, many thousands. And that steps up the voltage and down the current and creates millions of volts of electricity. So this works in reverse. So right now, in the stove, we have a couple hundred different coils of wire. The pot essentially acts as a single coil. So what this does is it massively reduces the voltage, but massively increases the current. And that's what creates those strong eddy currents. And I've touched on eddy currents before with, I think, the phi top. That was a cool one using eddy currents as a form of electromagnetic braking, which is something that like high-speed trains do. Anyways, uh, back to induction cooktops, that copper coil 
is what creates the magnetic field. Now, there is some heat loss in this system because the copper coil itself does create a bit of heat, but that is minimized by a cooling fan if it's needed, or by creating many, many, many different strands of very, very thin copper. And that minimizes the heat created by that copper coil. And because it's high voltage, low current, it doesn't create a whole lot of heat, unlike the high current, low voltage of that single massive pot. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Let's check out the history of induction cooktops. The first patent that we know of for induction cooktops was way back in 1910, but it was more theoretical and it didn't work very well because it, there was a few flaws with it. Fast forward to the 1950s. The Frigidaire division of General Motors created their first demonstration induction cooktop stoves. This is more of a, a kind of a, a science demonstration, a cool product, but it doesn't actually work very well. So it, it proved that the technology worked, but it wasn't available for consumer use. There's no one that actually had an induction cooktop in their home in 1950. That changed in the 1970s. From 1973 to 1975, Westinghouse created their induction cooktop commercial models. Now, these were inefficient and cost a lot of money. So I've, in 1973, they cost $1,500 for just the stove top. In today's money, that's somewhere around $8,300 for a low functioning cooktop that was noisy. This did not last long. It, they ceased production in 1975. Now, since that point, this technology has been getting better and cheaper to the point that today it is a very equivalent cost as an electric stovetop. And it works better, it's more efficient, and faster. So why isn't everybody using induction cooktops in their house? Unfortunately, you do need special cookware to use. Now, special as in magnetic, not necessarily more expensive. So you might have compatible cookware in your cupboard right now, but it does have to be magnetic. So you can check that by put, taking a magnet, sticking it to the bottom of your pot. If it sticks, you can use that on an induction cooktop. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter how long you put that pot on the stovetop, it will never get hot. So that's the biggest problem with induction cooktops today in respect to mass producing them for consumer use. Anyways, this is Destructive Creativity. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this show, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. We have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday morning, so make sure you subscribe. See you next time. I'm Jonathan. Bye!